Hi, I'm Daryl, and I'm a realist, also known as a flat earther. One thing that we deal with as being flat earthers is uh, the scientific community. Uh, we'll post, post pictures, memes, we'll post videos, we'll post facts, figures, uh, different experiments that have been conducted uh, in the past, but uh, not so much recently. And that often results in people saying that we're discredited because we don't have any scientific backing for what, our, what we believe, although there's tons of evidence. So, what I'd like to do is uh, submit a new experiment to the scientific community. This is very simple. Um, a lot of people don't fly a whole lot. Uh, I fly fairly regularly, uh, at least every other month. And one thing that anybody can do, this is a simple experiment that anybody can conduct to uh, determine definitely that the earth is flat. You know, grab ten dollars, go down to your local hardware store, pick up one of these spirit levels. Doesn't have to be this brand. I'm not getting paid by Swanson to promote. Grab a spirit level and take it on the plane with you. Now, I say take it on the plane because if we're living on a spinning ball or a globe, that's uh, 25,000 miles in circumference around the equator. According to curvature math, then the plane should be constantly dipping its nose forward in order to compensate for the curvature um, regularly during flights. But I don't know anybody who's actually reported that happening. And thus far, it's just been speculation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my spirit level onto the plane and prop it to a point to where it's level um, and I'm going to record the fact that the bubble stays perfectly centered and while that bubble staying perfectly centered it's going to be rather anticlimactic but that's proof that the earth is flat it is what it is uh, you know they call it a spirit level for a reason if you put this thing on a flat surface and it stays this bubble stays in the center that means it's level. Sorry, if we're not constantly dipping the nose forward and the bubble isn't going towards the backside of the spirit level, then we're compensating for curvature. But you're not going to see that. So, currently, I'm on location at the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport in Savannah, Georgia, and I'll be taking a short flight over to, over to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Once I get on the plane there, I'm going to do a 20 minute time lapse. Now, we're going to be on a uh, A321 uh, airplane. Max speed for that is 541 miles per hour. I'm going to do a 20 minute time lapse. That should cover about, mm, let's say around 180 miles. If we're going 180 miles over a curved surface or over the curved earth, as curvature mass suggests, then that means there should be compensation for over four miles of curvature. So, that's the experiment. I'll keep you posted. Stay tuned. Let's get ready to fly. Okay, so now we're on location at the uh, Charlotte, North Carolina airport. I'm on the way to my terminal. Getting ready to do this experiment. This is gonna be fun. Get ready. Now that the plane's at cruising altitude, let's start the time lapse.
Seattle, uh, you saw it here. Uh, I decided to go ahead and do 23 minutes on the uh, time lapse, and if my calculations are correct, that should have brought us over right around a little over 200 miles that we covered. And as you saw, there was no compensating for curvature, so uh, I guess that pretty much settles it. Uh, the Earth is flat. Well. Um, I guess that concludes this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe on uh, my YouTube page. Uh, if you're new to the flat earth concept and you don't really feel comfortable just yet talking to friends and family about this idea, uh, link up with me and the crew on Flat Earthers No Trolls or on another group, uh, Flat Earthers in Christ. These are good people. Uh, we're not crazy, we're just sick of the lies. All right, uh, well, all things considered, I think everything worked out pretty well. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Stay flat. Good morning. This is a response video to those out there who have objections to uh, the details of my spirit level flight experiment. Uh, another rebuttal video thus far I've showed that a plane flies over a level surface another thing that I was told after the experiment was to simply look out of the window to view curvature from the aircraft so I took you on a flight where we looked out of the window the whole time. During that flight, there was no observable curvature to be seen. According to the helocentric model, the spinning ball earth we're told that at the equator the earth is spinning at 1032 miles per hour eastward now because the United States is a little higher in latitude from the equator let's say that the speed slows down to about 850 miles per hour now, I was on a plane heading from the East Coast to the West Coast at 515 miles per hour the cruising altitude anyway or cruising speed is 515 miles per hour on an A321 Airbus, the max speed is 545 miles per hour, according to online specs for that particular aircraft. Now, given those numbers, I conclude that an East Coast to West Coast flight should be a physical impossibility. Now, why do I say that? Well, for example, and I'll just use this to make things simple. The plane is only going 515 miles per hour. The ground beneath the plane is moving at 850 miles per hour. Therefore, the ground is always outpacing the plane over 300 miles per hour. So being able to fly from the East Coast to the West Coast, that, that should never happen. But what happens? Well, people book their flights, they get on the planes on the East Coast, and they fly to the West Coast with no problem. Planes go from the west coast to the east coast, generally the same amount of time. A flight from Seattle to Texas, Houston that is, takes roughly three and a half hours both ways. From going to, from Houston to Seattle, about three and a half hours. From Seattle to Houston, about three and a half hours. Now, if the ground were spinning beneath us, that shouldn't happen. That should never happen, if you think about it. And that's all I want you to do, just consider these things. Because this is pretty common sense stuff. And what does happen? 
just that. Everybody makes their flights on time. And the times are always right around the same, going both ways. Almost as if we live on a flat, stationary earth. Because that's what it is. Now, before we get into this next part, let's listen to a pilot's testimony. I was an airline pilot for Delta for 26 years. A pilot's primary flight instrument is his artificial horizon, which he has to be maintaining level to keep from climbing and descending. From a cockpit, weather permitting, I could see hundreds of miles in all directions, viewing cities connected by roads across the flat plain as far as the eye could see. All right, so now number two, what should have happened on the spirit level flight experiment. According to the heliocentric model, concerning spherical trigonometry, the curvature of the Earth is calculated at eight inches per mile squared. Now, in my experiment, if you've seen, seen that already, I'll post a link in the description. I traveled 203 miles recording level flight. During that 203 miles, according to curvature math or spherical trigonometry the plane should have had to compensate for five miles of curvature going downward but while explaining that uh, it seems that some people uh, misinterpreted what I was saying uh, in my head I didn't go through each step actually I'll admit it I skipped a step so here let me let me let me grab my model now what I showed you was level flight for 203 miles bubble stayed centered the whole time generally the whole time now had the plane been dipping the nose forward the bubble would have ended up towards the back of the spirit level like so but that's not what happened what I showed in the flight was that the level stayed flush pretty much for the entire 203 miles now even so it showed that the plane was flying generally level because the plane was independent of the earth's surface during that flight that means in order to maintain altitude of 34,000 feet which is what I was told which is what we were told on the plane 34,000 feet was the cruising altitude so in order to maintain that while flying level the only way that the plane would have maintained that altitude while the earth's surface was curving beneath it would be a de decreased velocity and thus caused the airplane to slowly sink in order to maintain that altitude while the earth is still curving beneath it now let's say that is what happened and the plane was just flying level and it was just decreasing altitude or just flying at a speed that would constantly compensate for the curvature of the earth beneath yet and still even at the end of that even at the end of that at the end of that 203 miles per miles the plane still would have had to compensate for curvature because you see the plane was still independent of the surface of the earth so the plane was flying level but the ground beneath according to the heliocentric model the ground was still curving beneath the airplane so the plane's flying level and the ground still curving beneath so at some point in order to get proper orientation back to the ground the plane would have had to take a dive or dip the nose as I say but that didn't happen and you saw that so one of two things was supposed to happen either the plane was supposed to fly off into space because it was just flying level the whole time and it would have gained too much altitude because the ground is still curving beneath it right or the plane was just flying over a level surface the entire time which it pretty much shows that the earth is flat mosquitoes the surface is sloping at an exponential rate while the plane is flying just like that now I know before this experiment even starts that the plane does not dip its nose forward I know that during takeoff the plane dips the nose upward tips upward tilts the nose upward then it flies nice and level at cruising altitude maintains an altitude over a flat surface air we're in the air flying over a plane and then decreases velocity when we get closer to the airport then we land deploy the landing gear wheels come out bottom wheels hit front wheels 
and we're back at the terminal. That's how a flight goes. The plane never dips its nose forward. I know it, you know it. And that's what happens. The plane just flies level the whole time because we're flying over a flat stationary earth. And there's the proof. Be sure to like and subscribe. Comment as you see fit. Be sure to link up with me and the crew over at Flat Earth No Trolls or the future of Flat Earth. You can link up over there. Find me on Twitter at DMarble1. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video. A scientist is a person engaging in a systematic activity to acquire knowledge that describes and predicts the natural world. In a more restricted sense, a scientist may refer to an individual who uses the scientific method. Forget what you think you know about science. Science does not belong solely to a bunch of old guys in lab coats. I don't care what any meathead shill says. Any, any celebrity or anybody that feels like they have intellectual superiority over you. Whether you've done eight years of schooling or zero years of schooling. Anybody can be a scientist. Even you. I want you to believe in yourself because I believe in you. So as always, be kind to each other, take care, and stay flat.